What's up everyone, it's Cody, back again with another video. I just made $62,267.10 in one day. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I did that. If you enjoy this level of transparency, all I ask in return is that you remember to smash the like button for the Altube algorithm. With that out of the way, let's get into how I made that money. Even though I made over $62,000 in a single day, this all started about 15 months ago when I received a job offer from a large tech company. At this time, I was negotiating my total compensation, which included a base salary, bonus, and equity in the company. This was my first time negotiating a total compensation that included RSUs. Unfortunately, I ended up making a mistake that probably cost me $18,000, and I'll talk about that later on in the video. I ended up spending most of my energy negotiating negotiating the base salary while letting the recruiter know the RSUs were more than adequate. Ultimately, I negotiated an extra $5,000 into my base salary along with a signing bonus of $15,000. Just in case Graham Stefan is watching, my total compensation for the first year was $215,000. This was made up of a base salary of $150,000, a bonus target of $15,000, and an additional $15,000 signing bonus with $105,000 in company stock that vested over three years. At the time of the grant, it was worth $35,000 per year. It was my stock grant that enabled me to make over $60,000 in a single day. But Cody, your stock grant was only worth $35,000. So what happened between your grant date and vest date? Great question, viewer. Let me explain how restricted stock units work. Restricted stock units are a form of compensation that provides employees with some ownership in the company they work for. This is beneficial to both the company and the employee in several ways. RSUs are beneficial to the company because they incentivize employees to stay with the company longer. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, folks that were between 25 and 34 years old are only staying with their companies for 2.8 years. This is where the R in RSUs comes into play because the stock units are restricted. This means they come with some strings attached, one of which is always a vesting schedule. For example, I had a three-year vesting schedule with a cliff at the end of each year, meaning that each year I stayed with the company, 33.33% of my stock would become mine. Another way that restricted stock Documents can invest is on a graded schedule. This is where you receive a smaller portion of your stock over time. Yes, technically my vesting schedule was graded because I wasn't receiving a lump sum at the end of those three years. However, many companies have started to reserve the term graded for more incremental vesting schedules. For example, Facebook issues RSUs with a four-year vesting period where 6.25% vests every three months. Also, if you want to know more about Facebook's compensation or benefits, check out this video I made a while back. Another common way that RSUs vest over time is through a mixture of both cliff and gradual schedules. I'll use Lyft in this example, which has a four-year vesting period where there is a one-year cliff on 25% of the total stock grant, and then 6.25% will vest every three months for the following three years. All of those vesting schedules were created with the goal of employee retention in mind. My company hopes that the yearly cliff is enough to keep me around for at least one more year. Facebook and Lyft hope to incentivize employees to stay for just one more quarter, which could then turn into multi-year tenures. Companies are also able to save money by issuing RSUs instead of providing a higher base salary. How a company goes about issuing RSUs will depend on its unique circumstances. For example, a company with little cash on hand might dilute its existing shares to issue restricted stock units. Then the company would plan on buying back shares sometime in the future once they have more cash on hand. On the other end of the spectrum, you have large companies flush with cash. Instead of diluting existing shares, they would likely buy back stock and then put them in a reserved pool for employees. In this situation, the company is still able to save money since the stock will likely be cheaper today than it will be in the future. RSUs don't just benefit companies, but they also help employees. And I'm a shining example of that. The first and only way RSUs benefit employees is by providing them with ownership in the company. I can see some of you rolling your eyes right now, but having ownership in the company you work for is actually a really powerful thing. Just look at the Forbes billionaire list from 2021. You have people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, Larry Page, Sergey Brin, and the list goes on and on until you reach the Zhao Wei family at the very bottom of the list, with a measly $1 billion to their name. The one thing that all 2,674 billionaires on that list have in common is they didn't work for that money. Don't get me wrong, there was a time where they worked incredibly hard to get their company off the ground, but still, after a while, all of their companies were self-sustainable without them. The way they became multi-millionaires and then billionaires was by owning the company they were building. 
In fact, salary means so little to CEOs that some of them take a $1 yearly salary. As software engineers, we are all helping to build the company we work for. If we only exchange our time for a fixed amount of money, then our earning potential will always be limited. This is why restricted stock units are so valuable. For myself, I was awarded $105,000 worth of restricted stock units on July 15th, 2020. This worked out to be 631 shares of the company I was working for and was worth $35,000 per year as of January 15th, 2020. Fast forward to July 15th of 2021, the company I was working for was doing incredibly well and that $35,000 was now worth $62,267.10. If you wonder what the tax bill looked like for that, Keep watching because I will get into that a little bit later. As you can see though, having equity in a company can offer a significant financial benefit. In just the span of a year, my equity had nearly doubled, boosting my total compensation for 2021 from $200,000 to around $230,000, not including the money I was making by participating in my company's ESPP program. So by just owning stock in my company, I saw my income increase by 15%. This didn't require asking for a raise or getting a promotion. The crazy thing about all of this is my total compensation was projected to be nearly $300,000 in 2023, and that increase would have been entirely from equity I was receiving. So how exactly did I lose $18,000? I lost this money by treating the equity as an extra piece of compensation that was nice to have, but wasn't something I'd want to lose a job offer over. The reality is companies are often more flexible with their equity grants than they are with their base compensation. For example, instead of accepting $105,000 worth of RSUs, I could have asked for $125,000 instead. If they didn't accept that, we likely would have been in the middle around $115,000. Had we settled on $115,000, my first year grant would have been worth $68,296.13, which is about $6,000 over what I ended up receiving. Multiply that by three, and we have around $18,000 that I left on the table. If you are ever negotiating a job offer involving equity, don't make the same mistake I did. Instead, be sure to always ask for additional equity. While it may not seem like a big deal in the moment, you'll likely thank yourself several years in the future. What about taxes? First, I had to pay $13,758.75 in federal taxes, along with $902.87 in Medicare. I also paid $2,715.35 in Social Security. The best part about those Social Security taxes is that they pushed me over the maximum limit for the year, so I don't have to worry about paying Social Security again until 2022. Then I paid Illinois, the land of Lincoln, $3,082.22 for a grand total of $20,459.19. This means that of the $62,267, I was able to keep just $41,808. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there because I couldn't immediately sell the stock I had just been awarded. The company I worked for was reporting its second quarter earnings at the end of the month, which meant I was in a blackout period. When working for a publicly traded company, there are certain trading restrictions you will have to endure. In this case, the blackout period meant that I could not trade company stock until the restriction was lifted which was after the closing bell the day after earnings were announced. Between July 15th and the end of the month, the stock price dropped down a bit. When I was finally able to sell, I ended up receiving $39,576, which was about $2,000 less. And you might be asking yourself now, why would I have sold at a loss? Don't worry about that, you're not alone. One of my coworkers asked me why I was going to sell now instead of waiting for the stock to recover. The reason is actually straightforward. When you have RSUs, you are forced to hold that asset because you cannot sell it. Yes, technically the RSUs have no value until they are converted to actual stock that you can sell, but you can still see the stock appreciate in the same way. On top of that, my employer pays me my salary and provides me with my health care. They already make up a large portion of my financial well-being, so it would be precarious for me to hold onto stock any longer than I have to. For example, if my company shut down, not only am I out of a job, but my equity is now worth zero dollars. Instead, I would much rather cash out my equity as soon as possible. This allows me to have access to the money where I can invest it into a more diversified portfolio. Another slight benefit of selling my stock when the share price was down is that I'm technically taking a loss. This is because I paid taxes on the stock when it was at a higher value than when I sold it. This means that when 
I'm filing my taxes next year, I will be able to deduct the difference in share price between when I paid taxes on the stock and when I sold it. So that is the story of how I made $62,267.10 in a single day. If you learned something or just enjoyed my level of transparency, let me know in the comment section below the like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't done so already, so you can be notified every time I upload another video like this one. We also have an excellent Discord community that is entirely free to join, and it's a great spot to talk about coding and the tech industry in general. That's it. That's the video.